Hi there and welcome. I'm Mr. Gans. I'm Mr. McFadden. Today we're going to be talking to you about theoretical and experimental probability. So before we begin, we're going to need to look at some definitions. To start, we have to have an event, which is a situation involving chance that has more than one possible outcome. For example, rolling a die. Another example would be flipping a coin or drawing a card out of a deck. So an outcome, then, which Mr. Gans used in his definition of an event, is a possible result of the event. So if you're rolling a die, it's the chances of rolling a 1, rolling a 2, rolling a 3. If you're flipping a coin, it's getting heads or getting tails. Pulling a card, you pull the 8 of diamonds. Those are all outcomes to the event. Next, you need an experiment. This is a test to determine the likelihood of a specific outcome of an event. And we're going to be doing a couple of those, right, today, Mr. Gans? We sure are. But let's take a look at theoretical probability. So this is the likelihood that an outcome is going to occur in theory. So if we take numbers, we calculate, we take the number of outcomes by the total number, and that's going to give us that, that theoretical probability that we're going to get into a little bit more if you don't quite understand it right now. Lastly, we have experimental probability. This is when what we actually do the experiment. It's the likelihood of a specific outcome occurring based on the repeated testing an observation of results. An example of this is winning a game. Play the game as many times as you want and then divide the number of games you won by the total number of games you've played. That's the experiment and we're going to be doing one of these a little later on. Let's get into this theoretical probability. We're going to use the example of a six-sided die. When we roll it, we want to know the probability of rolling a one, rolling a two, rolling a three, rolling a four, rolling a five, or rolling a six. So if we take a look at our formula up here, we have the numbers, number of sides with the number 1. Well, on a six-sided die, there are usually only one side that has the number 1 on it. Divided by the total number of sides, well, a die has six sides on it. So that gives us a 1 in 6 chance of rolling a number 1. This translates easily to 17% if you use your calculator. So if we look down here, we've got P, and then in brackets 1 is equal to something. P stands for the probability. The stuff in the brackets is the event. In this case, the event is rolling a 1. So we already did it. That's 1 in 6. The probability of rolling a 2, 1 in 6. And so on for number 3, and for a 4, and for a 5, and for a 6. Now, for the last example, we're looking at if you're just rolling one number. Now, what we're going to look at is if you were to roll a die and land on an even number. So we have to look at the possible outcomes. So on a die, there's 2, 4, and 6 that are even numbers. That's three possibilities. So we'll put that as the number of sides with even numbers. Total number of sides, again, is 6. We'll reduce that fraction down, divide both by 3. We get 1 over 2, which is 50%. Similarly, for rolling the an odd number, we're going to get 1, 3, and 5. Those are all the odd numbers. That's three possible outcomes of a total of six possible outcomes. Again, it's going to minimize down to one half or 50%. If you notice, if you add the two probabilities, you get 100%, which makes perfect sense because if it's not an even number, it's an odd number. Mr. Gans, I'm going to challenge you to a race. A race? Sounds fun. I'm going to be the green car, and you're going to be the red car. A red car? This sounds awesome already. Every time this virtual dice in the top here lands on a 1 or a 2, my car is going to move up one space. All right. But every time a 3, 4, 5, or 6 lands, your car is going to get to move up a space. All righty. On your mark, get set, go. Alrighty, I won! I don't know if this was a fair race. I still don't think this was a fair race, Mr. Yans. Well, why don't we take a look at this mathematically? Well, your car had a 3, a 4, a 5, or a 6, and it would get to move up a space. Whereas your car only had a 1 and a 2. Ah, uh, I see where this is going. Your car has four chances out of six of moving up. And your car only has two chances out of six. You had almost twice as many as me, it looked like. 
you had two out of three. 67% chance of moving ahead. And you had one out of three, which is 33%. Now I get it. You had a way better chance of winning than I did. Okay, I guess the race wasn't fair. Alright, enough with all your games and theoretical stuff. Let's do an experiment. So we can roll a die, and we want to see how many times we can roll a five if we roll the die 50 times. Technically, the theoretical probability of rolling a 5 is 1 in 6. I wonder if we roll the die 50 times if we can actually get the same thing as a 1 in 6 chance. It's roughly 8 fives in 50 rolls that would give us that 1 in 6 probability. Alright, let's see what we can do. So through the magic of speedy video editing, we've come across with 5 fives out of 50 rolls. That's a little less than the probability. Before, we said that 1 in 6 out of 50 is about 8. So we actually rolled less than what we would have thought. Alright, so we did our 50 rolls, and if you remember, we managed to get 5 fives out of the 50 rolls. So out of 50 rolls, that's the same as 1 out of 10. Or only... 10%. So our result was definitely different from the theoretical probability, because if you remember, our 1 in 6 is somewhere close to 17%. What would happen if we tried rolling the die 100 times? Would we get closer to the theoretical probability? Well, don't worry, we're going to get do some activities tomorrow and it's going to help out. Before you come in tomorrow, just remember, theoretical probability is what will happen in an ideal situation. Guess what? We're not in an ideal situation. Experimental probability is what happens when you actually perform the event. And you'll see this during tomorrow's activity.